In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. It is good that we're here. Allow me to briefly introduce myself. I'm Father Jeff Fleming, your new pastor. I am so excited to be with you. This is a community I've known for a long time, so it's good to be with you as we pray together, as we journey together. In some of my other parishes, we had a practice of having prayer partners, and I'd like to introduce that here. A prayer partner is just simply someone you will hold in prayer during Mass tonight. They can be here in the church. They can be somewhere else. They can be watching on our live stream. Simply hold them in prayer. And do this for a couple of reasons. One, to remind us that we are called to pray always but also to remind us that Mass is not a spectator sport. We're all called to full active and conscious participation. And so as we prepare, we remember God's mercy, we remember God's love. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that through the yearly observance of Holy Lent, we may grow in understanding of the riches hidden in Christ by the worthy conduct pursue their efforts. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to the people, saying, The priest shall receive the basket from you, and should have set it in front of the altar of the Lord your God. 
Then you shall declare before the Lord your God, My father was a wandering Aramean who went down to Egypt with a small household and lived there as an alien. But there he became a great nation, great, strong, and numerous. When the Egyptians maltreated and oppressed us, imposing hard labor upon us, we cried to the Lord our God, and he heard our cry and saw our affliction, our toil, and our oppression. He brought us out of Egypt with his strong hand and outstretched arm, with terrifying power, with signs and wonders, and bringing us into this country. He gave us this land flowing with milk and honey. Therefore, I have now brought you the first fruits of the products of the soil, which you, O Lord, have given me. And having set them before the Lord your God, you shall bow down in his presence. The word of the Lord. No. Oh. 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, what does scripture say? The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we preach. For if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and is so justified. And one confesses with the mouth and so is saved. For the scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, enriching all who call upon him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Jesus returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the desert for 40 days to be tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and when they were over, he was hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become bread. Jesus answered him, It is written, One does not live on bread alone. Then he took him up and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a single instance. The devil said to him, I shall give to you all this power and glory, for it has been handed over to me, and I may give it to whomever I wish. All this will be yours if you worship me. Jesus said to him in reply, It is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him alone shall you serve. Then he led him to Jerusalem and made him stand on the parapet of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to guard you, and with their hands they will support you, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him in reply, It also says, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every temptation, he departed from him for a time. The Gospel of the Lord. Life is getting busier and busier. We try to cram more into the day. We start earlier, we work later. Our cell phones are with us 24-7. We check email, messages, social media constantly. We work through lunch. We bring work home. 
and at home, the busyness continues. Dinner has to be made. The kids need to get to practice. We have a meeting. We're constantly in a hurry to get things done. And we repeat this pattern day after day. How often have you said, I'm too busy. I'm too busy to exercise. I'm too busy to rest. Too busy to eat well. I'm too busy to play. I'm too busy. If I'm honest, I sometimes wear the I'm too busy badge with no small degree of pride and accomplishment. How about you? We probably all said I'm too busy to pray even. I know that I have. We've now entered the season of Lent. The three pillars of Lent are prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. So today I'd like to focus our attention on prayer. Prayer is something that we talk about all the time in church. Jesus invites us to pray always and in always. And yet I think it's something that we struggle with. Even though there's really no wrong way to pray, other than not praying at all, I know that I struggle with prayer. It's easy to get so caught up in life, doing all the things that need to be done, running around, that way too often I forget or probably neglect to pray. But maybe I'm too busy not to pray. Maybe you're too busy not to pray too. So let's explore prayer together. But ultimately, you will need to figure out what works best for you. For prayer is simply our communication with God. It's that simple, but it's also not that easy. And your prayer will be unique as you are unique. Even Jesus' disciples asked him to teach them to pray. And if they need help, we're in good company. So let's dive in. Let's slow down and pray. In today's gospel, Jesus enters the desert to pray. He'd just been baptized. He just heard the words of the Father addressed to him. You are my beloved son. With you, I am well pleased. His mission has begun. But instead of diving right into his work, the work of sharing God's love, instead of heading to the people that need him, he heads to the desert. He takes a 40-day retreat. He slows down, deepening his communion and communication with his Father. He prays. We have entered these 40 days. So let's slow down too. Let's deepen our communion and our communication with our Father. Let's pray. But how do we do that? Let me use a metaphor. Based on the tachometer of my car, it generally operates at about 1,700 RPMs when I'm on the highway. Some race cars operate at 10,000 RPM. So if your life had a tachometer, where would you be operating? The world says rev up, rev up to 10,000 as soon as you get up and stay that way until you collapse on your bed at night. Not much space for God. Not much space for living. Those who work at home keep the same pace, maybe even higher. Those with small children at home know what it means to be at 10,000 RPM all day long. Every minute of the day is consumed by those little beloved creatures who pull on your leg, color on the wall, track mud on the carpet, throw food on the floor, scream at the top of their lungs all night long. Again, not much space for God. The pace of a working single parent is double or triple of that of most of us. Again, not much space for God. So where do we hear that quiet, still voice of God in our busy and hectic lives? Where do we allow God to lead and guide us? If this seldom or never happens, how do we pray? How do we follow God? 
Prayer is taking time with our living, dynamic, and communicative God. Our God wants to talk to you and for you to talk to God. The heart and the soul of the Christian life is learning how to hear God's voice and to talk to God. And any way you slice it, a key ingredient to prayer is time. Not leftover time, not throwaway time, but quality time. Time to be with God, unhurried and uninterrupted. Time is required. So something has to give. Something will need to be used to help us rev down from 10,000 to 5,000, maybe 500, where we can be at peace with our God and hear what God is saying to you. If your life is running in many directions, if you're too busy to pray, if you're incapable of the kind of deep, unhurried prayer that is vital to your relationship with God, you need to slow down. Nobody ever said that prayer was easy, but is there anything in this world greater or more important than being with God? So maybe let me offer you a practical, tested way to reduce your RPMs, to slow down so that you can pray. I invite you to keep a journal, a spiritual journal. You can probably hear a few groans. I understand. I was like right there three weeks ago. I hated to journal. Who has hour after hour in the midst of their day to let their stream of conscience flow in an endless stream of reams of paper? I certainly don't. Too busy. So let me give you a recipe for journaling that I am using. Grab a notebook. Walmart has some for 97 cents. There are some that I have in the gathering space. Grab one after Mass as you leave. And the plan is to write in the journal every day, but restrict yourself to just one page. Every day, when you open to that blank page of sheet of paper, write the first word, yesterday. And then following that, a paragraph or two recounting yesterday's events. Sort of a post-game analysis. Write whatever you want. Maybe a little description of the people you encountered, your appointments, your decisions, your thoughts, your feelings, high points, low points, frustrations, what you're going to do, what you didn't get done. What does this exercise do, you might be wondering. Most of us don't really examine our lives. We repeat the same mistakes day after day. We don't learn from the decisions we make, good or bad. We don't know why we are here and where we're going. Journaling can help us examine our lives. There's even a greater benefit. The very act of journaling, sitting down, reaching for that notebook, focusing our thoughts on our lives, writing for a few minutes, reduces our RPMs. I started three weeks ago, and it's just what I needed. Because above my own energy level, I made a little tweak to the recipe. Instead of journaling in the morning, I journal at night. And then I reflect on that day. I journal before I go to bed, so I change that first word to today. And then I reflect on my day. I've been pretty good about doing it every day, but if you miss a day or so, be good to yourself. And it's not really about writing anything necessarily profound. It's about slowing down, turning to God in our lives. Journaling is the first step to slowing down in prayer. It gives the body a brief rest. It focuses the mind. It frees the spirit to operate. It's only a few minutes. That's the first step of the recipe. So now you have that first page filled out, reduced your RPMs. The next step is to turn the page over. And then write down some prayer. Who you want to pray for. Write down names. Write down what you want to learn from God. Allow God to again slow you down. So write on that back of the paper, prayers. And as with your daily entry, limit it just to that page. 
and keeps it from becoming overwhelming, ensuring that what you, that you can do it every day. It doesn't take more than a couple minutes. And once you write down your prayers, then take a moment and reread through them, but pray them now, even if it's on your knees. So now that your RPMs are down lower again, your heart has softened, invite the Lord to speak, even if it's a gentle whisper. That's the third step of the recipe, to listen to God. These moments of God's presence are one that really matter, because it's here that prayer continues and deepens. Unhurried, silent communion and communication with the God who loves you. Know that this is just one approach. I invite you to try it. Try it just for Lent, but a distinct time, not for the rest of your life. See if it works. If it doesn't, try something else. But we are busy, but not too busy to pray. I believe in one God, the Father and Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate in the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death in his way. And he rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. With complete trust, let us bring our prayers before our loving God. members of the church during this season of Lent, that we be examples of faithful service. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy, hear our prayer. For the civil leaders of our nation and our city, that they always act with justice and compassion, let us pray to the Lord. For all who are afflicted or suffering temptation, that they be strengthened by God's grace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy, hear our prayer. For our candidates for full communion and for those who will today or tomorrow be numbered among the elect, that they may be richly blessed in this time of preparation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have For the members of our community, 
for Father Richard as he settles into his new parish community, that we accept God's call in this holy time. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord of mercy, hear our prayer. For peace, for peace, for peace. Again and again, we pray for peace in our world, in the Ukraine, and in our families. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord of mercy, hear our prayer. We gather these prayers together by together praying. Prayers found in your liturgy sheets. God of hope, you journey with us through the desert. You challenge us to become more like Christ. During this Lenten season, may our prayers, fasting, and almsgiving give us the courage to go forth from these 40 days in the desert to share our gifts with the world. May our encounter with you allow us your hope for all of the human family. Amen. Pray that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, by abstaining 40 long days from earthly food, he consecrated through his fast the pattern of our Lenten observance, and by overturning all the snares of the ancient serpent, he has taught us to cast out the leaven of malice, so that celebrating worthily the Paschal Mysteries we might pass over at last to the eternal Paschal Feast. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim.
are indeed holy, O Lord. And all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power of the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one Spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Austin Anthony, our Bishop, your order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned here before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleased to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow upon the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The 
the Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray as Christ has taught us. Our Father, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy of you to enter my room, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
For those participating in the liturgy from home, please join in the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament of your body and blood. I love you and desire to receive you. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you. Never let me be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Renewed now with heavenly bread, by which faith is nourished, hope increased, and charity strengthened, we pray, O Lord, that we may learn to hunger for Christ, the true and living bread, and strive to live by every word which proceeds from your mouth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Just a couple of announcements. Join us on Friday evenings for our Lenten evening prayer, followed by soup and bread. We begin at 530 Tonight, a member of the Care for God's Creation Ministry will be a bit available after Mass. They have ideas, Lenten ideas, to help us with God's creation. Also, beginning on Sundays in Lent, we are having an adult Lenten se- series. It will be after the 8 a.m. Mass right here in the church. And our communal Lenten reconciliation service will be March 14th at 5.30. And also, I do have a limited number of journals if you want to take one. They're in the welcome space. I took what I could get at Walmart, so there's a few. If you can't get one, I do have a little recipe card just to describe what I proposed for a way to journal. Those are also on the same table. Please feel free to grab one of those. And again, I am so thrilled to be with you. Um, I can't wait to get to know you. You get to know me as we journey in the ways of faith together. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Now, mighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go, Go you are sent. Oops, sorry. <laughs> Not used to having a deacon. <laughs> Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Sorry.